welcome to the first of a series, a new series of live shows. My name is Nigel Main. I'm your host and founder of Sales Exchange. Well, thank you for joining me. I've got some new friends, some new, new, some new joiners, and there are some people who've, who've uh, seen me do some live streams before as well. So great that you're here. Um, why would I want to do a live stream? Now, I need to kind of set some parameters. I think that's probably the best thing, is that I have always worked in B2B. So if you work in B2C, specifically, selling to consumers, this really isn't for you. Um, in terms of my my audience, my I would say my audience are, are directors. If you're in sales, well, you too, because you're a director of your area. And so the, the easiest way for me to... Um, to communicate is to, I'm a director, you're a director. That 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 kind of makes sense in, in terms of how we're going to communicate this. And it's specifically for B2B. Now, a bit of a, not a caveat, but a, it's worth pointing out. If you work in marketing, in B2B, you're probably going to be a bit concerned about what I've got to say, especially if you're, um, one of your directors is watching this as well. We'll come on to that in a minute. So the point of this is that um, to kind of nutshell this, the the problem that exists between sales and marketing and and selling um, technology SaaS or services is that you have not enough reach or engagement, which is why your pipeline's no good. And there are s- some long term significant reasons that this is this this exists. The primary reason is that big tech martech have convinced businesses who sell to to other businesses to utilise technology and tactics that were designed for consumers. You have to to really grasp this. This is the the crux of the problem. Um, People talk about there there being an an, an alignment or a better alignment between sales and marketing, forget it. It will never, ever, ever happen. And the reason it won't happen is as directors, salespeople, we go and see people and see the whites of their eyes. Oh, I forgot, you know, I forgot something. I meant to do that. That's what I meant to do. This is why it's live. This is the whole thing about life. And the the point of this is that you can do this. And that's that's what we're going to lead on to. So going back to sales. You and I will go and, if, if we can engage or connect with someone, we will go and look, go and meet them and see the whites of their eyes and sell to them. People buy people. What do marketing people not do? They don't go and see people. They don't go and see the whites of their eyes. Their, their targets are not based upon what they sell to an, a, a specific individual. And this is, the, this is the absolute crux of the problem. And what I'm going to do today, I'm, I, I want to talk around this problem. This is loosely connected to certain themes I'm going to, I'm going to um, apply, you could say, over the next, the, the, the coming weeks. And today, the kind of the, the theme relates to investment. So whether you are an investor, um, uh, an investment company, private equity, um, venture capital, or you're on the other side. You're a company that either is looking for investment or wants investment. These are really critical elements, um, and I'll come, come on to them in just a minute. So we've got this, this situation that you've got um, this technology that's made for consumers. If, if I, if I want to buy a pair of jeans or buy something for me, I will take my wallet out, take my card out, and tap or buy or do whatever. Me, my money, my decision. End of story. Um, if I see something on Facebook or Instagram or whatever, and I like it or whatever, it says gives you your email address, I'll give them one of my email addresses. I'm, I'm quite happy for that. And so are you. When it comes to B2B, and someone asks me for my email address, you've got to be kidding me. I will never give you my email address because I know that you'll give it to a BDR and the BDR will chase me down and forever. And I'm not having that. Now, this is the critical thing. So go back to 2008, 9, 10, 
when automa marketing automation came out. Within a few years, different research and, 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 um, and work that was done, they realised that business owners hated filling out forms. It's 2014. 97%, back in 2014, 97% of business owners hated and didn't want to fill out a form. So they've known since then that it, it, it wasn't really a go of, for businesses because you and I want to self-serve, self-educate and remain anonymous for as long as possible. That's, that's just how it is. It's not... I've not made it up. It's how you, you're not going to give your details out to a salesperson. It's just that's just how it is. So you then take this kind of this this other look at marketing, and you think, well, if they've known that, why they, why do they keep doing it? Well, because we all wanted the golden goose, laying a golden egg. We just thought the Martech software that 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 was great. That's what we needed. We could, we could reach more people and, 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 and get more engagement and more prospects without having to employ all those BDRs and telesales people. Didn't happen. You've still got BDRs and telesales. You've still got people saying, oh, yeah, rah, 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 rah let's, let's get on the phone. But you kind of bring this together and you go, OK, people don't want to fill out a form, which means your pay-per-click is a waste of money. Your SEO isn't working because... The person that you want to sell to isn't searching because he doesn't want to. So you've then got your um, you've then got the situation with your BDRs. So your BDRs, 50, 60 calls a day, give or take. Your BDRs have a 301 chance of finding someone that might be interested. That's not good. So one person a week with one, one person's salary. So 50-odd people they'll find a year on their total salary. That's not good. And the problem is, the, the problem with all of this is that you as a director, you went into business because you understood that you had a, a total addressable market. You know what it is. It went in your business plan. problem is that you've never been able to reach it not 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 ever effectively because the, the mechanisms that are that exist within marketing are not there it's a big deal you've got demand gen lead gen abm you've got reverse ip lookup you've got gifting pay-per-click that's it that, that that constitutes everybody's business plan so if you're looking at investment for example or you're an investor Look at the past 10 business plans you've received. They all, they all look the same. They're all identical. Because there is nothing else, according to the marketers. They go, well, here we are. Um, if you know of Seth Godin, he's a um, quite a well-known uh, author and speaker and so on, to do with digital marketing, but to do with consumer land, as well, you know, predominantly. And he said, like, a, couple, a few years ago, oh, yeah, yeah, the, the, the average tenure of CMOs, it's about 18 months. Three months to get the plan set up, 12 months to try and execute it, and three months to find a new job. And it's been going on for years. Fact. And the trouble is, you go back to this golden goose. If we have all been sold to, constantly, constantly sold to, I've got, um, let me show you this. Um, dun, dun, dun. Uh, I've got this, there's this, this guy here, um, he, wrote, he, wrote, he wrote this book, Daniel Kahneman. And there, there are two, type, two ways to think, fast and you think slow. Fast is reactionary, is instinctive. And slow is considered and, and, and researched, you could say. So you've got these two, these two things here. You've got fast and slow. We go with fast. He mentions specifically about marketing that marketing messages are meant to be repetitive because then you think you're doing something instinctive or instinctively. Now look at marketing automation and everything to do with marketing automation, all the software that you've got. And the reason I say all the software you've got, um, and I might bounce around here and come, and come back to it because this, this 
show this series. I haven't got an end date, so it's just on go. I'm just looking to do this every Thursday. This is a conversation. I have no expectation of me finishing this show and you and, and put and saying, see you next week, and you've called me up straight away. I expect you to go, oh, <laughs> what did we just listen to? This is shocking. And it is shocking because I'm saying fire everybody in marketing, get rid of them. Get rid of your PDRs, get rid of all your marketing people. They're complete and utter waste of time, effort and money. Do that, you just become profitable. So you've got this issue with, 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 with your marketing. We all buy the same software. There are 30,000 different SaaS platforms of give or take around the world. Half of them are marketing. A recent survey, they said that... Um, Businesses have an average of between uh, 34 and 72 software platforms that they pay for, SaaS platforms. And half of them are marketing related. So combining this repetition, who are the marketing MarTech people selling to? They ain't selling to you because you won't see them. Back to, back to the remaining anonymous they're not selling to you. They don't need to sell to you. They sell to your marketers. They sell to your CMOs. So big tech, martech, sell to the marketing departments within companies and they look at you and go, well, you know, if you want to make some money, if you want to be successful, you're going to have to buy the software. And then you get the CFOs controlling the marketing budgets. You think, wait a second, why, why is... A CFO getting involved in marketing. How, how would he know whether one bit of software should be used or over another? He doesn't care. He just goes, well, actually, the ROI and all of it's rubbish. It always has been. Everywhere I've worked, it's always been rubbish. I don't need to look at it. So we can dispense, dispense with that or dispense with that to keep the cost down. It doesn't make any difference. And the marketers go away and sulk. But that's all. So... There is a critical, critical, fundamental problem within the business, every business, is that the marketers are the unpaid salespeople for big tech martech. And there's, I mentioned someone the other day, there's like two responses. Some people are going to go, God, I've, I've never looked at this this way before. I, I didn't realise, but no, it sounds like he, you know, it sounds, it sounds about right. You've got the other lot, the other people, other group of people who want to fight me. <laughs> and protect what they've been doing and justify what they've been doing. And say, oh, I'm having you tell, say, say to me that like, I've got it wrong. I'm not having you tell me that someone stitched me up. I haven't necessarily stitched you up. They just got you to buy a promise. It was always buying a promise. And that, well, that's marketing, isn't it? Repetition on the television, go to Tesco's. It's all at eye level, hand level, go and put it in the basket. It's, it's all the same thing. It's no different. And so businesses have persistently wanted to reach a greater market. Always, you know your total addressable market. We've never been able to reach it. Because the people that should be doing it don't know how to. Because they're just doing what they've been told, almost parrot fashion, by Big Tech Martech. So it's a, it's a big problem, not, uns, not, not unsurmountable, but it's a big problem. And that's what's been going on. And then you have um, situations, we've got this, this, this camera angle for effect, then you've got the situation of bringing sales and marketing closer together. It won't happen because they're both at odds with each other. Always have been. So the, the, the point comes down to, so what are we supposed to do? You've got this, these, these, these fundamental problems. Your job, your role as a director was to get other people, other businesses to know, like and trust you. That was it. You employed salespeople to go and do the same. The market came along and got, they got bigger and bigger and bigger. They now take something like, on average, about 10% of your total budget. You look at the ROI. It's pitiful. And, that, and there are a, a variety of, of, you could say, not fundamental, they are fundamental, because th there are things that we've, we have been told again and again and again that we adhere to. Uh, me, me too. Don't don't get. Don't think I'm sitting here going. Oh, 
I'm so clever. I, I never did that. I absolutely did it. Of course I did. Bit of background on with me. Um, I've been doing this for nearly four decades. Next year, four decades. I've been selling direct. I know I look really young, but four decades. So I've done the direct selling. I've done the cold calling, the door knocking, the yellow pages, card index boxes, CRM, CRM software, CRM software to integration, and then integration to to marketing automation solutions. And it was kind of around about that time, 2009-ish. I've gone, right, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing what I want to do. I'm not achieving what I want to achieve. And I was doing 200 grand per person per annum. I didn't know that was any good. Now look at the average in the UK. 100 grand, 100, 120, give or take. I looked at 75 of the largest software companies. And I'm kind of getting off the subject about what I was, where I was coming from, but, but 75 of the largest software companies around, so business process management, um, RPA, robotic process automation, and enterprise architecture. The average turnover per person per annum for those companies, those 75, 80 companies, was $144,000 per person per annum. Google's two million per person per annum. Microsoft's a million. So here we are, scratching around doing 100. Why? What's going on? You've got to ask yourself that question. So coming back to, so I got involved in marketing because I needed to find out. I must be doing something wrong. I, I'm just no good at doing this marketing thing because all these people over there in marketing land, they're so, so intelligent, so clever, got a complete hand on all of this. I need to understand what's going on. And you don't know as a director, not because you just, you're not capable. Why should you know? Your immediate response is, I, I employ these people. They're supposed, you know, I think it was... Um, um, Steve Jobs, that said, we, we employ highly paid people to tell us what to do, not, not the other way around. And rightly so, you, you employ these people, they're, used, they're supposed to tell you. But when I now turn around and say, well, actually, oh, they're not going to like me for this, but they haven't done any research in 20 years. They don't care. Why should they care? You're paying them. You're getting a salary. 80, 100, 120, 150, okay, whatever it is, doesn't matter, it's irrelevant. They're still not doing the business because you're firing them. You're firing them. I'm not. I'm saying there's, there's a problem here. And if, you're not, if you have a kind of a, an entrepreneurial mindset, you're going to go, there's got to be an angle. There has to be an angle to be able to make this work. And this is it. Let me explain. So you started your business and you got involved in sales, and so on and so on, based upon the fact that you knew who your total addressable market was. So let's, let's, do, let's kind of do a bit of maths very quickly. In the UK, between 10 and 50 employees is 212,000, give or take. That's 10 to 50, call it 200,000. 50 to 250, 136,000. 250 and above, 8,000. So they're all the com- they're, they're, so, so it's like 250,000 companies you know, we can sell to, give or take, however big they are. So you, you know who your total addressable market are. You know the size of the business. That's all you need to know. You don't need to know anything else. Size of business and vertical. That's it. You don't need your Zoom info and all the other stuff that goes around. What's the point? Because ABM said to go and get Zoom info or Dun & Bradstreet or whoever. And then blend that with your, your lead forensics and candy. And a bit of, um, what's the other, what's the other? Oh, gifting, 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 gifting. Oh, what a, what an amazing thing to, to introduce to businesses. Here's a hundred pound card if you'll have an appointment with us and engage with us. And someone's spending a hundred grand, you go, is that all you're giving me, a hundred quid? Is that any, anything more? They go, what would you like? Just opening the door for bribery and poor practice and so on. So put that to one side. So you now, you know how many people are in your total addressable market. Tam Sam Som, you've heard of it before. So let's go with 10,000. So 
So you, you now know that you have a total addressable market in the whole of the UK of 10,000 businesses. So you go off and, and, uh, and most salespeople know this, and we've been told this umpteen times, that a certain percentage of your total addressable market are always looking to start their buying journey. So on that premise, say, right, 10,000, between 1% and 15% are looking to start their buying journey every week. Go with that, go with 1%. It's easy, numbers are easy. 100 people every week look to start their buying journey. And you want to engage with them. So hold that thought, 100 people, 10,000, 100 people, 1%. So how do you do? How do you go around that? How do you get it? How do you how do you go about engaging with that? You email them, of course, and tell them you've got a live show. Bef- before you think, oh, well, that's where he's going. He's going to start flogging his live show gear. I know Chris is watching. No, I'm not. I'm just I'm just kind of recommending it. But the the bottom line is, is that you want to reach your total addressable market, don't you? That, that, that's the point of being in business. Your marketing people are not doing it. They're trying to scratch around to extract as much um, business from the small number of people that you've got on your marketing automation platform and sitting there passively waiting for pay-per-click to work, which it won't. So you need to be proactive. So you need to communicate with your total addressable market and tell... 10,000 people what you're doing every week. You think, oh, blimey. Just over 100 quid to message 10,000 people 12 times a month with MailChimp. So not only can you lose your marketing team and lose your BDRs, you can now lose your subscriptions to your, your marketing automation platforms. It's getting worse for them, isn't it? So you've emailed them. You've emailed 10,000 people and of those, a a specific number, because you don't care about anybody else because this is your target market. So you're now communicating to your target market. Now, in addition, and you should already, I'm assuming, I mean, you should already have a database of your total addressable market. I mean, 10,000 names only cost three and a half grand. And if it's less, you know, average is about 350 per thousand. So it's not, it's not big money at all. But 10,000, three and a half grand, that's it. 100 quid a month for MailChimp. The only other expense that you would have re- relating to that, to, to communicate to your total addressable market so they know who you are and what you're doing, because all you want them to do is to get to know, like, and trust you. It's nothing else. Is you do, you upload that 10,000 names to LinkedIn and put banner adverts so your banner adverts appear on their newsfeed. Come and follow us. Have a look what we're doing. Put on a live show. You've got salespeople that are gregarious and outgoing, affable, funny. Yeah? You've already got people that could sit in front of the camera. They sit in front of people. They would sit in front of people every single day of the week, give them half the chance, but they just don't. And that's, that's one of the critical factors that you have to look at. How much time do your salespeople, or do you as salespeople, or to people in your company, how much time do your people sit in front of genuine, active prospects who you know unequivocally are looking to buy? It probably breaks down to minutes and not hours. Because they're elusive. You can't, you, you, you can't <laughs> no one wants to meet you because they want to remain anonymous. There's some, um, You've all heard of Gartner. So I, I was following this guy um, in Gartner, a very, a very, I don't know what the title was, like very senior or super senior or chief, I don't know, VP of, of, to do with um, sales and marketing related stuff. i have been there 20 years. And um, he did this, this article for Harvard Business Review and said, actually, all the demand gen, gen ABM stuff doesn't work. You've got to be transparent. You've got to give your prospects everything they need so they can self-serve, self-educate and remain anonymous until they're ready to buy from you. And then he left. <laughs> so he's been, he's been 25 years, say, you know, towing a party line. 
does an article, Harvard Business Review, then leaves. I mean, I believe, I, I, I'm in agreement. So the, the, the point here is this is not rocket science, but it is a square peg in a round hole because if you're trying to do something that relates to um, the consumer industry and everything within it, trying to make that work here, it's not going to work. It, it cannot work because you, your, your, your first port of call, the first thing you want to know, what's the ROI? Don't care what it is. What is the ROI? I don't care what the product is, I mean. What's the ROI? If you buy a pair of trainers, you go, oh, they look good on me. Job done. But when it comes to business to business, your immediate, your, 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 your go-to place is, what is the ROI? Is it going to make me money? I don't care about saving money to, ex- to an extent. You can only save so much. You know, people say, oh, I can save you money. But how much money is it going to make? You're in business to make money. You're not a social service to, to, to employ lots and lots of people. You're there to make money. And that's what this is about. People want to see you. They want to get to know, like, and trust you. And the way that you, you have no choice in this, you must be authentic when you do, when you get to the point of greeting them. There's no choice. You know there's no choice. So how, how do you orchestrate something like this? Do so you think, I, I know this, um, I know a company, there's about 400 people in it. And the um, a sales director, one of the sales directors, spoke to the CMO about this, about this, this, this type of approach. And, they, and the, the CMO's response was, we're too small. And I'm thinking, <laughs> God, I feel sorry for this company. Too small. Sales exchange is me. It might come as a bit of a, sur- a surprise. Um, I'd like you to go and have a look at the website, of course, and, and the, the, there's a specific reason for that. I'll show you um, uh, one of the things that we've got on there is that that particular page is it provides links to absolutely everything that you need in the sequence in which you need them to orchestrate all of this. Cameras, mics and lights, that's it. I've got a car, I'll show you this, um, where, are where are we, where are we, let's go to, let's go to there, we go to this one here, okay, this is the kit, I've got a couple of cameras here, you can see one there, but there's one a bit further back, light, um, tech, there you go Chris, we're, we're, we're using it all, I'm showing it off, um, by the way, the guy Chris, he works for a company called Black Magic, and that's the kit that we use here and here, and that, all the cameras plug into here, and Um, It enables me to switch them here, and this is the background, and this does the um, the thing that's called the lower thirds and so on. So the the, the point of this, the whole point of this is, well, you can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. You know, you've got, especially especially with technology now, auto-focus, auto-setup, auto this, that, and the other. I I press one button. And I'm, I'm streaming to LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube all at the same time with a potential audience of 7,500 people. Too small. I've got 400 staff. And it's, this is just me. I'm, I mean, the thing is about this, and about this, I mentioned about authenticity before, is that if I make a mistake, I make a mistake. You, know, you 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 bang the mic, or you you do this, or you do, or or the wrong thing comes up, and it's like it's not about the mistakes. It's like, well, I bet he's I always bet, bet he's not happy about that, or oh, oh, he's gone. All, I can see he's gone all red. Whatever. And the point is, is that is it complicated? Turning on lights. You know, I've I've got, I've got a light up there, so I, I've got this light on here. Not so much light over here, so I've got a bit of a shadow. I've got a light behind there, it's called a hair light. There are just some things that you need to know. I mean, we'll show you how to do it. But, but there's some things you need to know. And you set a studio up in your office. Because lots of people are working from home, right? So you've got the space. 
So when I'm thinking of it, because I, this is life, let's just go back to investment. If you if you looked at the like I said you look at the the, the pre the past ten business plans they're all the same. You need people, you, or rather, businesses need to be in a position to reach total addressable market. You've got high net worth individuals that are putting this money up for investment, and they expect a return. Sadly, they don't get one. Because they're always waiting for unicorns because they have to, because not enough. I mean, 40, like I said before, 40% go bust, 75% don't reach their targets, their own targets that's on their business plan, and 95% don't make a return investment for the, for the investors. So there's got to be a change. But the, the simplest, simplest, simplest way of looking at this is that you have been, we, 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 we have been indoctrinated to sell one to one. Across the board. And this, this is one to many. Now, there are, there's some other things that, that, that come into play when it comes to how you're, um, you appear online. People get all, fa- all flappy about pay-per-click and, and SEO. Waste of time. Complete waste of time. Because in the first instance... You have people that write for your business, for your company, or you individually may write as well. What constitutes a good document? And the response typically is, well, if I like it or not. Okay, that's fair enough. Google don't look at it like that. Google expect your articles, because you do not have a blog. I'm telling you now. (laughs) You don't have a blog. You must not have a blog. You are thought leaders in your given field writing thought leadership articles. You are not writing a blog about what you did on your summer holidays or recipes or motocross bikes. You're you're writing to educate your audience how they can obtain and achieve a return on investment buying your product. Okay? You do not have a blog. So therefore, your articles need to be between two and 6,000 words long with an indexable, clickable content list at the top with bullet list, numbers lists, videos, graphics, infographics, external links and so on that const- make that, makes that article constitute to be a good read. And it must entail and, and include EEAT, expertise, experience, authority and trust. You put all of that in there. So you've got this great document. What do you do with it? Put it behind a form. Get rid of all your forms. You want as many people reading that as possible because if they read it to the end, what's at the end? Your name and address. If they want to contact you, they will. No amount of soft follow-ups are going to work. They'll buy from you when they're ready. So if you've got multiple, 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 three, four, five paragraph blogs with some stock image at the top, it ain't going to work very well. So the easiest, if you're looking at your content, I mean, look at, look at our website, look at what we've done, look at, what, look at how it's been structured. There's long form documents, there's downloads and infographics and podcasts and videos and streams and uh, everything, everything's on there. I don't post them up. I post adverts that promote the content because the content promotes the, the product. So if you're looking to get out on social media, you need to be promoting your content, not your product. But how much content should you have? Well, actually, not very much. Don't need, don't need very much. You just need the right stuff out there. Because you can have 5, 10, 15, 20 adverts for one piece of content. But you, you may have already experienced this. You can't keep um, posting the same article, blog article, whatever you want to call it. You can't keep posting the same thing because um, LinkedIn won't let you. But it will let you post multiple pictures up. And you've probably seen a number of mine. So once you've got all that set up, 
We've, we, I mean, I, I, call it, I call it social 444. Four adverts, four times a day over four weeks and repeat. So I've got four, four adverts going out every single day, every month. What I have to do is just update the, the, the article because I'm communicating that information to my target market. That's the point. Can't think of anything more soul destroying than being passive and just kind of wait, waiting for, you know, I'll just sit here and, and, and wait for my paper click to work. And then someone comes along and says, ah, oh, well, you're not bidding enough, are you? So it, 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 people have been, businesses have been conditioned into this, this process of hope instead of being proactive. So you go back to the, you know, this, this total addressable market, um, 10,000, 100 people being interested. Say you'll get a percentage of those watching you. I mean, think how small I am. I mean, on, on LinkedIn, I didn't look at Facebook, uh, Facebook, YouTube. I got about 5,000 people following me on YouTube. I, did, I don't know how many people are going to watch this. No idea. I know about 40 people on LinkedIn. Just think about that in terms of numbers. Because, okay, not everybody watching this is going to be a managing director that's going to go, yes, Nigel, come in and talk to us. But I know that I'm speaking to influencers, people that go, you know, listen to this guy and it made a lot of sense because he's basically saying, get rid of our existing marketing operation because it's been set up to work for consumers and not businesses. That's why we're not getting any business. You can't unhear that. I've done my job. And the next stage would be, well, let's find out what, what this is all about. Massive website, loads of content, everything that you need, go, go for it. You might even want to keep some of your marketing people if they've got a, a penchant for, for technology and, and this kind of stuff. Or you might want to get, re- replace them because they're so, they're, 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 they're so gra- um, stuck in their own um, ideals that they'll just go and get another job somewhere. Because at the end of the day, the buck stops with you. And, make, you know, we, we run our own companies. Anything goes wrong, we lose the company. And they go and get another job. Go, oh, it's a shame. And you lose your house or whatever. So, you know, they're, they're not going to go, oh, listen, listen, let, let, me, let me give you some money because I can see that you, you, you're, you're struggling here. We're not getting the business. Let's all chip in. Said nobody ever. So your job, you, you know, like I said, your, your job is to get to get people to know, like, and trust you. And, if, and, and you've always, always, always wanted to do it at scale. How do you do it? You do it this way. Email them, banner adverts, invite them to a show, and then you've got your salespeople. Get a couple of, I mean, okay, I'm doing this just one, just, it's just me. And I'm... Like I said before, this is like a com- I want this to be a conversation. If you've got a question, email me or message me, anything, and I'll respond. I won't publish it. Yeah? I'll respond. I've got absolutely nothing to offer. I've got nothing to sell. Except one thing speed. That's all. So, you know, if, if time's running out, like you said on that, 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 that poster, the, the thumbnail. You know, things are getting a bit tight. You're not quite sure what's happening. I'll make it happen quickly. That's all. And so, you know, we, we, we're at this point in, in business where something's got to give. And to date, over the past 20 years, nobody in B2B has come up with a better idea. Or should I say an alternative idea. So you have to think about this. What are we going to do next? You've tried everything. You've tried everything that's available. You've tried everything that the great and the good have told you to go and do. It's cost you an absolute fortune. And your, 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 your marketing people are going, oh, look at me. I, I have such a large techno- Martech stack to, to work with. It's like, get rid of it. Because it ain't making any money. And, of course, there's this quid pro quo because you think you need to employ these people who are highly supposed to be highly technical to run the tech stack to generate business for you. But your you, you, you per person per annum hasn't changed. In fact, the success of businesses hasn't changed in decades. 20, 30, 50, 70. 
20% capacity in the first year, 30 in the second, 50 in the third, 70 in the 10th. So give or take, 90% of businesses go bust, period. So with all this technology out there, why isn't it working? Why hasn't it changed? Why aren't we all doing 2 million per person per hour? Like Google. So that's, that's the critical point. So in terms of what I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm saying that, um, that we've got a, uh, an opportunity. You have an opportunity to change things dramatically and very excitingly for you too. You can dramatically reduce your costs, dramatically increase your exposure to new business and be able to communicate authentically, which is what this is all about. And so, you know, if you're, if you're an investor, let's like kind of go back to the beginning, if you're an investor, you need to be looking out for businesses that are looking to do this because do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always got. It's a fact. And so if you're, if you're in business, you need to change things up. Well, because it's so low, it is just so low cost to do this. That any company can do it of any size. Just prepare your content in advance. That's all you have to do. And if you're really that nervous, do it in parallel to what you're doing at the moment before you, you get rid of everybody else. Give, give them an opportunity to, to, to save their jobs. And I'm serious. I'm absolutely deadly serious. Because nobody's going to come to your rescue. Not ever. They never have. They'll asset strip you. But nobody's going to come to your rescue. This is the only surefire way of making this happen and reaching a total addressable market. And I'm just talking the UK. You could be an international company. You could do the same thing and reach everybody everywhere all at once. All you need is the data. To message them, message them and say, this is what we're doing. So I think I've been speaking for about three quarters of an hour. I could probably speak for England. But the, the critical thing is, is that this is, this is the starting point. This isn't, and, and now I'm going to, you know, show loads of slides and, 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 and convert this into it and make it a webinar. No, this is live, live. Yeah. And I'm going to be here again next week and the week after and the week after. And you'll go away and think about this, I hope. And you think, well, what, what about this? And how do we do, how do, we do this? And, and maybe you need to look at us. But the point is, is that this is potentially the most exciting time that could ever happen for your company because your competition are not doing it. I only know a certain number of people, you know, six degrees of separation and all that. So your, your competition aren't listening to this. So it's something to think about. So that's it from me. That is it from me. Um, I'm just thinking, have I got anything else that I missed? I don't think so. Next week, we're going to be talking about um, SMEs and giants. And one size doesn't fit all. And there are different ways of doing things. And so we'll touch on that. But we, it, it's to create this conversation. Nobody else out there. There's nobody else out there talking about new business generation specifically for B2B as I'm doing. Because I've done my homework. So... That, that's it. That's kind of the um, first foray, you could say, into looking at live streaming. And, and, and there's a really specific reason for streaming. I could have done a video, but you wouldn't get the warts and all. I wouldn't get the knock on the door saying you've been, <laughs> you've been talking for 45 minutes. But it's authentic. And if you've got two people, the, the, the most popular um, videos that appear to do with businesses are two people talking to each other in different locations, you know, head, headphones on and everything else. Person one, person two, talking and just having a conversation. They're the most popular. So if you've got a couple of your salespeople or a couple of directors sitting in front of the camera talking about what you're doing, people want to be, it's part of our human condition. We want to be engaged with people. We want to see what they're talking about. And if we're all sitting, uh, sitting at home, like most lots of people are, Watching something like this changes it. So anyway, that's it from me. If you've got any questions, you can message me privately. Um, there's a, an email address is going to come up in a second. And I hope, I hope you join me next week. That's it. Bye for now.